Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is January or February 23rd, 2018. And as always, we'll take a look at last week's eBay auction results. We're going to take a look ahead at uh, some great things coming up this coming week. Uh, a few good sellers are back, and we came across some pretty terrific things, actually. And we'll also take a, a very brief look uh, just across the at the, uh, the Sothe Sotheby's catalogs I'll show you are up on the site and next week we'll do a video on it on some of them okay there's a very good series of sales coming up in March there's six of them and uh, quite exceptional and we'll talk briefly about them here and we'll do more on them uh, during probably next week all right and this was one of the pieces that was up uh, last week this was a really fine Yongshen period uh, Chinese taste uh, Famille Rose dish beautifully decorated uh, wonderful wonderful coloring just a, a great example here's the back of the plate there's the foot rim that nice foot that you want to see neat glaze stopping just above it terrific decoration had a few minor enamel losses here and here on the robes uh, but other than that it was a nice nice example and it did pretty well it brought 565 dollars not at all an unusual price for one of these uh, just a very nice coloration <clears throat> and then there was this pair of plates. This is a pair. I can't enlarge it because the, sometimes eBay has these uh, odd listings that won't enlarge. This is one of them. But um, this is a pair of uh, uh, Yongchen or early, early, early Chin Lung plates um, with the uh, birds and flowers on it. And a nice, nice pair, eight and three quarter inches tall. And they went relatively inexpensively, $265 for the pair, 130 bucks a plate. Uh, that's a good buy for one of those, for a pair of those. All right. And then there was this. This was that uh, rather attractive um, sort of TC worked uh, uh, textile that was up. A uh, seller out in the Midwest had this and uh, beautifully done. Nice old one. Late 19th century example, judging by the work. Uh, some good shading here, a little hand colored shading on the silk and so forth. And uh, it did quite well. It brought uh, $1,363. This was that seller Pud. 77 Pud out in um, um, Ohio that we keep an eye on. He always finds interesting things. Yeah, I never knew there was so much good stuff in the Ohio area. <laughs> Surprising. And then there was the seated Buddha. This was a very nice seated Buddha. It had two marks on the base here and here, and I'm sure people looked them up. He provided good pictures of them. There they are. Uh, but nice quality all the way around. And I was kind of curious to see how it would do because it had some damage right here to the toe. See down here, the, the big toe and the next toe had, had some old breaks to them. But uh, the, the quality, the facial expression of the Buddha was really charming, especially the way the eyes are done and the big cheeks, very happy. And uh, that's important on these. And these are heavily collected in China, the, especially these older ones that are about 100 years old or so. And this one did pretty well, considering it had a, a little bit of damage. went for $2,422. A nice example. It also had its original base, which is great because if you if if you get one and it doesn't have a base, having one made can be uh, fairly costly. All right, and uh, then onto this this nice looking turquoise carving of a little girl with a fish, beautifully done. She's kneeling onto a, a nice stand. I'm not sure if the stand might have been made for it a little bit later. One of those silver wire inlaid stands, but a good clean good clean carving. Uh, here's the top of the uh, of the. Uh, uh, of, uh, of her hat she's holding over her shoulder and so forth there it is nice facial expression and it brought six hundred and ninety dollars I think pretty well deserved I, I, I think these small carvings are pretty charming and uh, then on to this this was a, a Kung Shi period um, a, a, a teapot or a wine pot uh, and I think this was one of the relative bargains of the week if you like Kung Shi porcelain and you're working on a modest budget uh, this this was a pretty good buy. Uh, it went for only $153. Um, as I, I, I say over and over, always leave a bid. Even if you think it's going to go for $400, which th if this had brought four or $500, I wouldn't have been all surprised. Uh, it, it went for a very modest amount. So always leave a bid if you're, if you're not sure. Okay? And also you forget. Sometimes people look at the, oh, leave, I'm going to leave a bid on that. And then you forget to save it. You forget to leave the bid. And suddenly it went for a price well below what you might have paid for it. And that's kind of disappointing. 
And then under this, the uh, Kung Shi plate with the leaping fish. This was a beautiful plate and, and rather unusual color palette with these uh, uh, waves uh, flopping around on the, on the rim and then the fish with this beautiful deep green um, uh, uh, wave pattern underneath the orange carp. Nice plate. Had some typical fritting. Had a chip here. If you look carefully, you can see it. And it had some uh, fritting up on the rim and so forth. But it still did very well. Because it is, oh, I meant to say, this is also a Kung Shi mark and period plate. There's the Kung Shi mark, and it is of the period. And it went for $1,513. Not an unreasonable price for a good piece of Kung Shi. And uh, there was this plate. This was uh, one of the plates I, I, so I think I spoke a little about it last week because I thought it was so pretty. Uh, and sort of very lavish use of uh, Yongshan period, probably. Uh, lavish use of uh, cobalt uh, blue over it, glaze enamels and red. And then these wonderful yellow highlights sort of punctuating the piece. Uh, just beautiful quality. And again, with the lotus rim and then the lotus uh, pattern appears again in the center. And uh, went for just $355. That's a very beautiful thing for just $355. I, 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 I liked it. And then on to this. This was a curious thing. This was a, a, a group of uh, mortals all riding different beasts, so water buffalo, elephants, uh, several different foo lions and chi-chi, a spotted deer, a tiger, and a horse, and so forth. Uh, quite interesting. Uh, probably about 80 years old or so, 70 years old. And uh, it went for $1,691. But for what it is and the quality of the work, I don't think this was an unreasonable purchase at all. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. It would make an interesting display. All right. And then on to this. This was that uh, very pretty framed silk needlework, uh, 19th century, early to mid-19th century, I would guess. But look at the quality of the work on this. I hope some of you looked at this, even if you didn't bid on it. Beautiful quality work with uh, pr uh, precious objects and bronzes and vases and citron fingers, Buddhist, a little Buddhist altarpiece here, so forth. The, the, this piece up here with the uh, fertility fruit, pomegranates in it, and so forth, and uh, just a, a nice example all the way around. And uh, it did just fine. It brought $3,350. I'm not surprised. Um, I wonder if it hadn't at one point been a seat cover or a throne cover, chair cover of some kind based on its layout, but nice quality, just a good thing. And then on to this. This was that little tiny Republican period vase, about three inches tall or so. I uh, had a Chin Lung mark on the bottom. And obviously, it's not Chin Lung. It's Republican. But excellent quality. Um, these little Republican vases, when, when they're decorated so well, as, uh, or as well as this one, can do ter just great. And uh, these, these are the kinds of things that do turn up in sort of you know, junk shops around. Uh, if you live in an affluent area, hit the local junk shops. You're likely to find one of these for $20 or $30 sitting, sitting there because uh, people think, oh, well, they're fairly new and they're not worth much. All right, this one brought $738, um, very good price, but not outrageous, and that's fairly predictable with those. And then on to this. This was something that I put on there, and I was wondering if anybody would bid on it because it had an opening bid of $400. It was about a 9-inch plate, and it's Kang Shi, obviously. And I, I, I wondered if anybody would, would, would bid on it because it was, it, was, it was worth probably $1,500 or, or so. And uh, then, as coincidence would have it, in the Sotheby's catalogs this week, um, I came across this right here. Here's a pair of them in the Sotheby's catalog uh, this coming March. All right, very similar, very, very similar. But these, the Sotheby's examples are a bit smaller. Um, they are only 21 centimeters in diameter, eight and a quarter inches. But look at the estimate. They it were originally sold by Chait Galleries in New York, um, and they have an estimate of three to $5,000 or roughly $1,500 to $2,500 a plate, okay? And um, here's this one. This was 28 centimeters, so it's, uh, you know, around uh, 10, 10 or so inches, 10 or 11 inches. And uh, look at that. It didn't sell. And uh, the, other, the, the other comparable examples right now are, are being estimated at $1,500 to $2,500 a piece. So the, the lesson here is if, it has a high, if you like auctions, I get it, you like the excitement of an auction, you're getting a bargain. Well, opening bid on this of $400 was a real bargain. That was a steal. And uh, um, maybe he'll put them up again. Okay, this is uh, the seller, welcome all friends. Okay, but uh, don't let, check around a little when you see a high starting opening bid, check around a bit. And you, you, you might realize that that higher than normal opening bid is still a relative bargain. All right.
And uh, on to this, the uh, rank, the circular roundel rank badge. Uh, this was a nice badge, actually. It was a good coloring. Uh, the moon in the sky looks like it was, was done with little bits of coral, which they did do from time to time. Let's see. Is, yeah, coral beads. And uh, that, of course, helps the price. Nice uh, metallic thread at the bottom. And uh, this, this did quite well. It brought $1,175. Nice piece. And on to this, this little Wan Li plate. Cute little Wan Li plate with a bird sitting on a rocky uh, outcropping and surrounded within the typical uh, Wan Li border that you see on these. Here's the back of it, lots of kiln grit. It's a provincial piece, but perfectly acceptable, perfectly nice. And it went very inexpensively, $112. Uh, not bad at all. A nice little a period authentic piece of uh, late Ming porcelain. And then on to this. This was that carved sandalwood uh, card case. Uh, they made a lot of these, of course, and they turn up fairly often. But this one is, uh, every once in a while I show the wooden ones, because this was a step above the average uh, sandalwood card case from, this, uh, from the mid-19th century. Exceptionally well carved, beautiful carving. And as a kicker, it had the original um, uh, box that it came in from China. There it is. It's not in, the box wasn't in great shape, but it's got Li Ching on it, gold and silversmith, and they sold card cases. It, a fairly well-known uh, uh, business uh, in China at the time. A lot of China trade stuff came back with this uh, company label on it. Here's an end shot. There it is. And uh, this did pretty well. It brought $543. But having it with the original box is pretty great. All right? That's a, that's a, nice, that's a nice touch. And uh, then we had this Famille Rose planter, a nice big one with these, uh, again, lotus tip uh, 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 rim on it with the, with the birds and in a garden setting and so forth. And it had these open worked feet, with these things with the endless knot sort of but cut out on the bottom. And uh, here's the interior of it. But a perfectly good late 19th century example. And it brought $898, but that not at all unreasonable. That's a nice thing. You know, if you buy these planters, put plants in them, for heaven's sakes. I'm always surprised to see them perched around houses, but they never have plants in them. All right, and then on to this. This was a, 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 a robin's egg blue stove. They call them. Um, very nice one, a little scholar's uh, desk object. And I thought this would do pretty well. It, it brought almost nothing. It brought, um, I've had these in the past, and I've gotten anywhere from a... $175 to $400 for them, depending on the, on the quality. This had pretty good quality to it. And uh, it went for $69 um, from a, a, a seller in the UK. Uh, this was, this was, that was one of the relative bargains of the week. I thought that was a pretty good buy. All right. And then on to this, the, the rather nice little uh, Yuan early Ming bronze that I pointed out uh, last week. I liked it a lot. I liked the color. I liked the patina of it. Um, nice, nice, nice decoration. Good, good crisp and clear. And uh, let's see, how did it do? Um, it, it, well, it brought $745. There you go. I think when we talked about the value, I said it would probably fall into the six, seven, eight hundred dollars range. And there it is. They're fairly predictable. The market on this is pretty well defined. So you, you sort of know what it's gonna, where it's going to get. So it's just a matter of if you want to chase it to the upper limit of the, of the values or the lower. <laughs> All right. And there's another Republican base. This was also a good one. Uh, had a nice looking uh, scene of immortals on it. There they are reading scrolls and talking and so forth. Here it is. And it had, of course, an apocryphal mark on the base. And uh, it did all right. It brought $641. Not bad at all. Not quite as charming as the one that was up earlier that had the kids on it. Kids are always charming on these things. All right. And then there's this bowl, this uh, late 19th century bowl. Lots of activity on it. Um, let's see. Here. Here's the, uh, the bottom. Underglazed blue mark. So forth. There's a Kangxi mark. It obviously isn't Kangxi, but uh, there it is. But what it did have was this. It had some nice rows of script and calligraphy on it, and I suspect it's a poem or a story about what the bowl is depicting. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $439. Uh, it had a little rim chip to it, as I recall. Okay, and that's sort of it for the highlights of the week. And now over to here. If you come over to the site sometime this week, or next, we never take them down. Uh, under dealers and auctioneers, you'll find uh, the current batch of Sotheby's catalogs. Uh, you know, and it is, 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 is a catalog called Ming. There's about six or seven lots. It's a small catalog. And then there's the, uh, 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 the collection here of uh, Chinese export, the uh, Jin Yatang sale, 
and then the uh, 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 Jerry, Jerry Tang sale, this one. Uh, we'll open this up, hold on, give this a little flip. There it is, okay? G, J. Ru Tang sale. I, I, always, I'm, I get tongue tied on Chinese language. All right. And this was the, um, um, the auction catalog for about 90 items out of that collection I did a book review on a few weeks ago about this huge collection of uh, Kang Shi pieces that have been, has been accumulated, started back in the 70s by, an, uh, by a, a Massachusetts gentleman. And it's just exceptional. And this is a really nice catalog. And the catalog is very much like the book in, in many ways. It's laid out. It's got lots of information on it, very detailed. Uh, take a look at it, all right? And uh, next week we'll do a video on some more of the, uh, the sales that are coming up, and we'll do a quick video on this as well. All right, it's well worth it. And then coming up this week, we have this. We have, um, let's see here. We've got, oh, this is the uh, Qing period stuff. Um, he's, got, he's back. He's got uh, 61 lots that are uh, coming up. Here it is, and uh, nice things. They're all on there right now, and they close in a week, and we'll cover those in this week's newsletter. And also, uh, let me show you this. This, this came up. This is a very nice uh, Chin Lung period barber bowl. Nice, nice plate that'll be in this week's uh, newsletter. And this, this is this I think is one of the nicer things on this week. Is this very nice uh, Ming uh, late 15th century plate with fish. And, uh, and aquatic life all over it. Nice looking bowl. This is a real one. All right, look at the back of it. That's very good. It's got an old repair up in here, a little gold lacquer repair of some kind, but uh, just excellent quality. Uh, nice looking bowl. And it's up to $110. It closes a week from today. Uh, worth taking a look at. And uh, there's the Barbara Bowl, which you've already discussed. Uh, there is a nice looking uh, robe that'll be in this week's newsletter, 19th century uh, robe. And this very interesting um, uh, 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 coffee pot, Ascot Court Antiques, is on with this. So this is a nice ribbed uh, Kang Shi period uh, pot. I would, I would say it's Kang Shi or maybe early Yong Chen. I haven't, let me take a look. I'm not misspeaking here. They say, they say it's Chen Lung. Well, they've examined it in person. I haven't. So I'll go with their description, all right? Um, all right, now let's see here. Um, let me see here. Now, there's something fishy here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go back. All right. This thing has, where's that photo? Something on here said Ascot Court Antiques, or am I crazy? There it is. This seller apparently bought this from Ascot Court Antiques is, and is reselling it by using their photos. I missed that when I went through these. I just came across it. That's a nice teapot. All right. So um, we're going to find out who Bay Plus 8 is here, um, located in Vermont. Oh, I know this guy. He's done this. He did this a while ago. He buys he, he buys things, uses their pictures, and resells them. In any event, you might get it for less, what he, than, less than what he paid Ascot Court for it. How's that? All right. And there's that uh, very nice Ming plate again. And uh, here's another, uh, this is a rather nice roundhouse antiques here. He's a seller, he gets all kinds of things. He put this up, and he's got a bunch of other things as well. He's got about 60 lots up uh, coming up this week. And uh, this, this is from Guestin Gray um, over in the UK. They don't sell a lot on eBay. They do mostly fixed price things. But we're going to put them in the newsletter too this week, even though they're, they're fixed price items, because they handle great things. And sometimes when they put things on here, they're a pretty good buy. And I, and I think this is one heck of a Kang Shi plate. Just beautifully done. And uh, there it is. And they're, they're asking 2500 for it. But we're going to put a couple of their things in there. If you like Kang Shi pieces, this is a good big one. Look at the back. Nice, nicely done. All right. So that's it for the week. And um, everybody have a great weekend. And I'm sorry about the little pause back there, the confusion over that teapot listing. But I think that's what's going on. Uh, there are uh, a lot of buyers on eBay that buy things, put them in storage for a year, and then re-offer them. Okay? And they basically just copy the listing over and resell it. And it's all trade. Okay? And uh, have a great weekend. And see you next time. And uh, give us a thumbs up on here. Um, I, I, I keep hearing how that helps our, uh, our visibility on Google somehow. I don't know how, but it's supposed to. And uh, sign up for the newsletter and come over to the forum and join us. Uh, so we're putting up a lot of stuff over there. It's having fun. We're having fun with it. All right. T see you all next time. Bye-bye.